Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'll be reviewing these Mamba F722 base flight controller stacks from Diatone. Now Diatone recently announced these new range of Mamba F7 flight stacks and mine have just arrived. And judging by their new range of mini quads, these seem to be their go-to flight stack, taking over from the super reliable and very popular F4 stacks. And I've used the F4 stack on quite a few builds and I reviewed them a little while ago. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how these compare. And to be honest, I think this time next year, most of us will have moved to F7 rather than using F3 or F4. And given the range of offerings from Maytech and Kakute and so on, it can only increase their popularity. And why not? You get a 216 MHz processor that's almost twice as fast as an S4. You get super scalar pipeline and DSP capabilities, which only enables developers to get more creative. And, of course, you get more UARTs with built-in inversion. And given all the peripherals we use these days, extra UARTs are a massive plus. But what about H7? Well, it's still in its infancy, and I think Sirius Pro are the only ones to release an H7 processor-based board. It's not for me now, but given time, we'll see. And looking at the stack, you know their Mamba or Diatone. And in some ways, the blue soft mount gummies just give it away. But they're clearly from the same family as the F4 boards. And this comes in two flavours. This is the full size one, 30 by 30. And this mini stack, which is for smaller builds, like three inches and cine whoops and that type of thing. And the obvious standout features for me are these fantastic PCB plates that have got all this silk screening that clearly show all the pads. And if you turn it over, it shows you all the UARTs. On the full size one, they've added a novel feature of a Bluetooth chip. And this is an awesome idea. And it means you can connect to the board with the SpeedyB app on your phone and change all your Betaflight settings. So no more scratching around in the bowels of your flight bag for that elusive USB lead. This Bluetooth feature isn't on the F722 Mini, which I'm guessing is pretty much due to lack of PCB space. But watch out for this Bluetooth feature as a copycat on other developers and manufacturers boards. And both of these packages are pretty much the same. You get the stack, a separate top plate, this guy here, which is really nicely made. And you get a bunch of spare silicon and anti-vibration washers. Let's have a look what else is in here. There's a low ESR capacitor, which isn't Rubicon. It's sort of got that look of Panasonic about it, but there's no label on there. And Diatone recommend this for 6S, but to be honest, I just use it always. You get a spare interconnect cable, which is pretty good. And you get an XT60 connector. Although I suspect if you're using the mini stack, you'll probably want to use an XT30. So let's pull these apart and take a closer look. So here's the flight controller. It's a 30 by 30 form factor, and it's based on the STM32 F722 RET6, which is the same as the Maytech I reviewed recently. And if we check out the pads against the cover board, I really do like this board, it's a clever idea. It's just extending their packaging, it's great. So up here, we've got the receiver pads, ground, five volts, PPM, and S-Bus. And that S-Bus input there will actually take I-Bus as well. 
and this is actually UART 1. So next down here are the IO pads for UART 2 and those are marked TX2 RX2 ground and 5 volts just in here and if we turn this over and look at the board there it says UART 2 is vacancy it's interesting but I think we know that means it's free to use and then we've got the lead and boot now if you look here there's two switches one on the top of the board and one on the bottom and the top one is for the bootloader and the LED button the one at the bottom here this is for the LED controller and it allows you to quickly change the colors using the onboard 2812 LED controller and you can add the Mamba LED strips here in each of the corners if you look there it's labeled ground 5 volts and LED and basically this bottom switch here if you give it a short press that will change the color of the LED modules and a long press will get you into flash mode so it's nice and easy to change the colors while you're out flying with the friends and if we move a bit further down here just there we've got TX3 TX sorry TX3 and RX3 and that is UART3 and the power pads and if we look over here UART3 vacancy <laughs> free to use and I really do like the way that they've added the 5 volts and the power pads next to each of these free UARTs. It makes wiring them up just really easy and you don't have to end up trying to solder two wires onto one 5 volt and ground pad which is just really annoying. Now along this side here, along the bottom, there's the RSI in RSSI sorry input so you can take the RSSI level direct from your receiver and display it on the OSD and then there's UART 4 which is there and these are the pads for the Bluetooth not quite sure how you'd end up using those but basically UART 4 is Bluetooth we can see here you don't actually get that on the mini board And then, what have we got here? We've got UART 5, so we've got ground 5 volts, TX5 and RX5, which are the IO pins for UART 5. Again, nicely marked up, and you've got power with those as well. Maybe you could connect your GPS there. And last along here is UART 6, again, TX. 6 RX6 ground and power all nicely labeled and they've actually dedicated that to ESC telemetry so you can get all your ESC voltages currents and so on and temperature and if we go along here we've got yet another LED strip so we've got an LED an LED strip if I could say it in each corner and there's another one here so that means you've got a total of five which means you can go really wild pimping up your quad and these are designed to use the Mamba Flashbang LED SW601 boards which I'll show you in a minute and if we go up here we're now into the video section let's have a look here so we've got the usual 5 volts ground and video out marked here as TX3 and this means you've got smart audio so you can change the VTX from your transmitter and we've also got a very useful 9 volts there if you need it and ground they haven't been skimpy on giving you ground and power pins on here it's really nice so what else we've got up here we've got the buzzer pads uh, buzzer plus and minus those two there and the camera input pads so we've got power and we've got video in and along here you've got the ESC pins 
So this only supports up to a quad. So we've only got four outputs. And you can use the solder pads to solder directly if you're using a separate ESC or separate 4-in-1 ESC or even separate ESCs. Or you could use the interconnect cable, which is what we're going to be using. Oh, and what else we've got here? We've got a spare VCC in ground, which is just your full battery power. So this is very nicely designed and well laid out and just well thought out. So we're on this side we've got the flash memory, we've got the OSD and the gyro and I think that is the Bluetooth chip. And on the other side here we've got the STM 32-bit processor and there's BEX for 5 volt and 9 volts at 2 amps. And they make a big thing about having transient suppression or VTS which is sort of like an active shunt to absorb over voltage spikes. So hopefully this is going to be really well protected and nice and robust. It's just really well thought out. And you can power this board direct off your battery from 4 to 6S, which is nice. Now, onto the 4-in-1 ESC. This seems to use some pretty beefy FETs, and we've got the current sensor down here. And this uh, is BL Heli 32 and supports all the usual D shot protocols 300, 600, and 1200. And it is good for 50 amps continuous and 50 amp, sorry, 55 amps for 10 second bursts. And it's a nice PCB, very beefy. If we flip this over, one of the things that I think is really good about this, and this reminds me of what Immersion RC used to do with the old Vortex 250, this is conformally coated. And this is a great idea because this is probably the part of your quad that's going to hit the wet grass, it's going to be on the bottom. And there's lots of volts and currents bouncing around here. So it's a really nice touch. The bottom side is the only side that's probably going to get wet I think. Obviously if you're flying in the rain it's a different case but you probably shouldn't be doing that. So this all looks pretty promising and I've got an interesting build plan for this stack so I'll keep you posted. So let's take a quick look at its baby brother the F722 Mini. Now this is just like the F722 shrunk to a 20 by 20 millimeter form factor but it doesn't have Bluetooth. I think there's just not enough room on these boards to fit Bluetooth to actually get the Bluetooth chips on there. And it's 30 amps rather than 50 amps on the ESC and there's only a 5 volt back. Other than that it's exactly the same. Although, oddly, the spec for this says it will run off 2 to 6S, so it's still 6S, although the full-size board says it's 4 to 6S. That's a neat feature, this, documenting where all the pads are with a PCB. Quite a nice idea. And although this is really well labelled, I'll leave a link in the description to the diatone connection diagram. And also, Diatone have a big warning on their website about leaving at least 5mm space between the flight controller board and anything else. So this isn't something that you'd actually have on there, this is just for reference really. But their th thinking is that you don't want that mounted more than 5mm closer to the top plate of your quad or to the flight sorry, the ESC board. And they're specifying five millimeters, I guess, because this board just gets hot and it needs really good airflow around it. So, you've been warned. And I think you'll see these used in most of Diatone's new quads. And if they're as reliable as their older F4 boards, which they've updated recently as well, they're onto a winner. And as usual with all-in-one stacks, it makes for a really neat build. 
and you can wire it up really quickly. I thought it would be interesting just to see how the Bluetooth works on the F722 and what you can actually do with it. So I've got this connected up to a power supply, we'll just power that on. It's all looking good. So you can get the SpeedyB app from the QR code and the link that I'll leave down below. But it's a free app that runs on iOS and Android. So you just fire it up. And it says start scanning, so I'm going to click Bluetooth. And it's detected two devices. I think that's my headphones. Here we've got the Mamba F722 and a serial number, so you just select that. There we go. Now SpeedyB is a really, really, really good app. It's full featured and it's not like the EasyB that came before it. So here we've got, so we can see we move it around. Looks just like the same thing that you'd see if you're running on your Mac or your PC. And if we go down here, we've got the ports page, configuration page, and so on. Let's scroll down here. Go to the CLI and just check what version of beta flight we're running. Just type in version. So we're running beta flight 3.5.5. Couple of point versions newer than that available. And it is the Mamba F7 target. There you go. So if you need to change anything when you're out in the field, Obviously you can do some things with the Betaflight OSD, which is really useful, but you can't get access to everything. So this is a really, really good way to actually change configuration and see what's going on your board without having to find a USB lead. And sometimes the USB connector just isn't in a convenient place. But there we go. So. Thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please consider subscribing to the channel for updates. I'll see you next time.